Hi, so these notes are about fibers for forensics. Make sure you have the notes document either open in another tab in Schoology or you have the paper copy that you got in class or you've printed it. All right, so fibers are considered class evidence. So they can't be um, identified back to one specific group. They're not individual, but they could be like back to like a certain type of t-shirt, let's say or rug or type of rug, um, but not like a, if I'm not, I'm not the only person that would have that rug, for example. Um, they have to have probative value, meaning, right, they can prove something, otherwise they're not gonna be of value in court. Um, and they're pretty common piece of evidence. Fibers are left behind all the time, whether it's from clothing or any other sort of fabric um, or even like certain materials, like building materials and such. Um, they can be uh, characterized or like tested for comparison using physical or chemical properties. You're gonna do this or look at this in a lab. For example, like chemical properties, we'll look at burning and how they react, react with heat and flames versus physical, we'll look at them typically under microscopes. All right, so fabric is made of fibers. Fibers are made of twisted filaments. If you've looked closely, at fibers, you've been able to see kind of little teeny strands that are wound together. Um, there are two main groups of fibers, natural and artificial or synthetic. So your natural fibers, fibers are gonna be from animals and that means like their wool or their, um, their hair of some sort typically. Um, vegetable or plant or inorganic materials like rocks, uh, minerals, we usually call those types of fibers. Artificial fibers or synthetic, are ones that are created sometimes either from natural sources like cotton that has been altered, turns into rayon, or they're artificial from the beginning like polyester. So uh, natural fibers, like I just said, are either plant, cellulose, animal, or mineral. So plant examples, a couple of them are cotton. Uh, actually, wait, missed this slide. So types, so these are some, of, some common types. Um, and I'll kind of go through these more specifically going forward. Okay, so cotton uh, is made from the cotton plant. Uh, I've got a picture on this slide. You can see it up here, the cotton plant. They take these pieces and they wind them into uh, specific strands. So like here is cotton. So you're going to get these um, not completely uniform, kind of uneven um, strands of um, twisted filaments. Their cotton is strong, it's tough, it's flexible, it absorbs moisture, it's not shape retentive. So cotton, like if you have cotton t-shirts, they might shrink in the dryer. Um, or like if you are like my son and you stretch pull out the neck, it's gonna possibly stay stretched out, it's not gonna go right back to that shape. Um, lots of times um, we want some of the characteristics of cotton, but we want them maybe to hold their shape better so they might mix them with like polyester. So lots of times uh, t-shirts will be like a cotton and polyester blend of some sort. Um, linens are made from a flax plant. Linens are similar to cotton in that they are um, durable. They, they don't tend to be as soft at first, but they will be softer as time goes on, as they're washed and stuff. They are a little bit more breathable than cotton. Um, so some people like them for like hot weather because uh, you'll get more airflow and such through them. Um, they also dry out more quickly, linen does, but it gets wrinkly and such. Um, rayon is taking cotton and chemically altering it, so it's making the cotton softer, shinier, um, and a little bit um, more versatile in multiple uses. All right, so here's pictures of rayon, and then here's fabric made of linen fibers. Um, so like here's the cotton like I talked about and here would be rayon. So rayon, right, chemically altered is going to make every strand look uniform. So that's why you're going to get more shine um, and kind of a smoother fabric. So animal fibers, sometimes called protein fibers, um, a lot of them are different types of wool. So wool we usually think of as being from sheep, but there's different types of wool. You can get mohair, which is from goat hair. Uh, rabbits, angora, you can get wool from camels, alpacas, llamas, vacunas, um, all sorts of different animals. You can use their hair for different fibers. Um, silk is another animal fiber from the silkworm. 
It um, spins the silk to make its cocoon, so then that can be used for fibers. Uh, silk Reflex Light has insulating properties, so if you have something that's like silk lined, it's gonna keep the heat inside. Uh, mineral fibers, it sounds weird to think of fibers made of rocks, um, but not all rocks are hard rocks like a granite. Um, these aren't fibers necessarily that you would wear. They're gonna be used lots of times in different building materials like asbestos, for example, um, which is fire resistant. So it has been used like as different insulations or like uh, firefighter coats uh, used to be asbestos lined. Um, asbestos has been no found to be a carcinogen so you maybe have heard uh, or seen the commercials where it's a lawyer talking about like if you've been exposed to asbestos you can get a cancer called mesothelioma um, and there's different lawsuits and stuff as people have been exposed um, rock wool <clears throat> excuse me is another insulator uh, it's made from a basalt rock which is a volcanic rock um, it's kind of you've maybe seen it. it's like that black rock with all the little holes and pockmarks it's like air pockets form and then the air leaves and the rock is left behind with these holes in it um, and it's mixed with a byproduct of steel and copper so here you can see asbestos are kind of these strands here here's rock wool and then fiberglass you're maybe more familiar with um, these they actually take glass melt it down and then they push it through little teeny holes to get these strands and then they can do a whole bunch of different things with them. Um, one thing they can do with them is they make fiberglass like hulls of boats because it's really lightweight, but it can also be really strong. They'll actually spray the strands on. If you've ever looked up closely, like the inside of a boat lining, you can actually see the strands of it. Um, it's also in, you've maybe experienced this with the flagpoles on um, fire hydrants. If you ever run your hand down them, if they're kind of old and they've cracked a little bit, you might get little fiberglass strands that come off and you can get little fiberglass slivers. So don't do that. It hurts. All right. So synthetic fibers. So these are made from petroleum, coal, natural gas. So oils and things from inside the earth. A um, <clears throat> bunch of different uses for these. Um, there's good and bad things about synthetic fibers. So nylons nylon is extremely like lightweight it's the most durable of all the synthetic fibers so like fishing line is nylon and there's different strengths of nylon like if you do fish you know there's different tests for the lines depending on what you're fishing for um nylon is sometimes used in fabrics or things too um polyester is um made of polymers and polymers in chemistry is a big part of chemistry um Polymers are taking these little teeny units, these repeat units, we call them monomers, right? Mono means one, and it's the same unit linked in, in a big long chain. So polymer, is, poly means many, is going to be a whole bunch of monomers. Like these are giant molecules with huge long strands and chains. Um, polyester is taking an ester molecule and repeating it over and over again. Um, and that's used a lot in a lot of fibers. You're, if you look at your shirt label, um, you're probably going to have most common t-shirts are going to be some sort of poly cotton blend. Um, acrylic is another common fabric that you'll find. Um, it's really warm, lightweight. It can be really soft. So some of uh, you'll find that in some of your clothes. And spandex is really elastic. So it's super stretchy. And then it can go back to its original shape. So that's used quite a bit too. um sorry someone just waved <laughs> all right so here's some pictures different types and um widths of nylon we've got polyester spandex acrylic kind of what the strands themselves look like all right so how do we identify these because you're going to either do this in a lab or you're going to see pictures of this so first you're going to you can look at them under microscopes just like in the hair lab you can put them under a microscope with a, um, a wet mount slide and you can observe them on different power levels and you can see what they look like. Uh, burning them, we can see how they burn, like if you actually put them in the fire, um, what they smell like, what color they make the flame, the smoke and the appearance of the residue. We also do kind of a heat test so you can put them next to the heat. Some will like curl up 
Um, some will melt just by being warm. Like you'll find that happens a lot with your synthetic fibers. Um, so like, for example, if I have, if I'm wearing a synthetic fiber and my shirt starts on fire, that could melt to my skin. So like there are reasons to use those fibers and then not to use those fibers in different situations. Um, thermal decomposition is heating it to break it down from like your polymer, your big units down to your smaller units. And then there's different tests in terms of solubility, like what they will dissolve with and then decomposition, how they'll break down. You could even do like density tests and such, right? Find the mass and the volume to calculate the density because that is going to be very from fabric to fabric or fiber to fiber. All right, so when fiber evidence is collected, let's say it's a big item like a shirt um, or a blanket, you're, they're always going to be collected individually. They're going to be put in paper bags because they want them to be able to breathe. They want air to be able to go in and out. So they're not going to put them in any sort of plastic bag, especially if there was like, let's say, moisture on the shirt and you put it in a plastic bag and seal it up, then you might have bacteria or different things that grow on it and that's gonna affect your um, evidence. So it's always gonna be a paper bag. Um, <clears throat> let's see, you're gonna make sure they're not touching, going on the same surface before they're being bagged because like we said, it's a common trace evidence. So you don't want fiber to be left behind from one thing and then get contam contaminate another piece of evidence. So you're never gonna like put them all on the table and then put them in different bags. Um, if there is fiber that's seen like on exposed skin or like an object, like a table or a chair or something, they're going to do what's called the tape lift. So they would put like tape. It's not quite like scotch tape. They found a, a fiber on my shirt. They kind of do this. They pull it up and then they might tape this to like a piece of white paper. Um, if they find other fibers, like they pick it up, let's with like a forceps or a tweezers. Um, typically they'll put it in a small sheet of paper. So what they might do is they might put it in a piece of paper here. They'll fold it up and then they would put this to kind of keep it safe and contained in a paper bag. And then it would be much easier to find that one strand. All right, um, so you, we read about the Wayne Williams case, just to remind you, so how does this come into play? So and remember in the Wayne Williams case, that was the Atlanta child murders where all of those um, boys were missing and they were found dead in the river. And what really helped them solve that case was all of the different fibers, right? They were all class evidence. There were fibers from the bedspread, from the, the car, um, I think there was another rug, there were dog hairs, and all of those were class, but where they all overlapped fit with Wayne Williams. So that's how they were able to convict him with class evidence, and that was mainly from fibers. Um, so that is fiber evidence. Make sure you have all your notes. You will need them for your quiz.